that particular individual to do that for him. Now, when the Holy Spirit makes his will known about Barnabas and Saul to separate them for um, ministry as apostles now, um, what happens is that these five men fast and pray further before they lay hands on Barnabas and Saul and then send them out into the ministry of the apostle. Now, let's just get a bit of a timeline here as to what actually transpires. The, the five of them are busy. And the scripture says from verse 14, Then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, whom, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lands. Let my name be named upon them. And the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. And let them grow into a multitude and in the midst of the earth. Now when Joseph saw, and this is important, uh, that his father, on fellow believers, I'm not talking about unbelievers. Unbelievers are sinners. So, you know, if you tell an unbeliever, you need to get your act together before I lay hands on you, you're not going to happen, okay? They are sinners. And so there's no contamination between uh, unbeliever and believer. So don't panic on that issue, all right? But when it comes to one believer laying hands on another believer, in order to bless them, in order to, to impart God's um, uh, healing power to them, for argument's sake, um, you need to... Be led of the Spirit as well. So if there's a check in your spirit, you need to listen to that. Paul says, don't lay hands hastily on anyone, nor be partakers in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure, Timothy.